Given that their job affords them the opportunity to unironically advise people to chill more than anyone else on Earth, using that most professional snowboarders would be pretty laid back. Although my knowledge of snowboarding is admittedly limited to the SSX games, I feel quite confident in saying that the most laid back snowboarder is a Japanese snowboarder called, line, <laughs> Kokubo Kazuhiro. If only because he once wore an outfit so fucking swag and laid back that he caused a minor international incident. So, nearby Lulu, are you familiar with this story? I ask, knowing that you read the article accompanying this video five minutes ago. <laughs> well, yes, from the article, but also I vaguely remember hearing about this when it happened. Um, obviously, back when it did happen, I was still living with my mom, who is, who is Japanese, and anytime something major happened, like in the news that had to do with Japan, she always kind of had something about it or her opinion was asked about it. Okay, fair enough. And uh, I am familiar with it because I wrote this article that I'm reading <laughs> from right here, and which of course makes me an expert. But for anyone out there who doesn't have the benefit of the article I'm reading from in front of them, or a Japanese parent, uh, the basic summary of this story is, is that the aforementioned line... Kokubo Kazuhiro turned up for his team's departure from Japan to Vancouver for the 2010 Olympic Winter Games, dressed like this. And you saw the accompanying picture for this article just a few minutes ago. Yeah. How would you describe how Mr... Would it be um, Kazuhiro or would it be Kokobo? Kokobo. So Mr. Kokobo. How would you describe how Mr. Kokobo was dressed? <laughs> um... Like a snowboarder. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna put like I'm gonna put like, swag as fuck because as you can see from the image behind me, um, Mr. Kokobo, he was dressed in the team's uniform, but he'd accessorized it in his own style. By which I mean he decided to wear his tie a little bit looser, undo that top button just a tad, and then accessorize it with a giant fuck off pair of sunglasses. I'll be honest, he <laughs> that style to me is very evocative of like a host. <laughs> And I'm not nodding along to pretend that I know what she's talking about. I played the Yakuza games, where that's like a plot point in a lot of the games. Where, like, your main character just works as a host and gets made fun of for being old. <laughs> even though he looks about 20 the entire series, even when he's, like, 60. Because you've watched me play those games, haven't you? You're like, that's a very handsome man. The way this guy's dressed, though, doesn't remind me of Kiryu. He reminds me of the main character of Yakuza 7. Do you know, like, the giant, like, wild lion hair? <laughs> Because he just looks so fucking cool. But it's, it's simultaneously dated, but timeless. Because he's even got just the big, big, like, dreads, like, coming out of his head. He looks like the Japanese version of Moby from SSX. <laughs> Not Moby the singer. Mo I'm going to look him up now. Moby. I was going to say Moby. Moby's bald. <laughs> no, I was looking him up. He looks like the Japanese version of this character from SSX. <laughs> No! He's got the dreads! It's the no, dreads! Carl! No, the only way to bring that up is because there's a YouTuber who looks exactly like him. <laughs> Wooly from the best friends just looks like Mopey. Anyway, to bring it back to line. Kokubo Kazuhiro. That's the, I'm asking you to do that because if I pronounce it wrong, some fucker in the comments will be like, you pronounce that wrong. So now, try and do that now, you bastards. I've got someone who speaks the fucking language with me. <laughs> Shipped him in. Got it all done. Yeah, but Shipped like... him in. But nearby Lulu, if somebody has a closer connection to Japan than I do, um, would you like to guess what happened when Mr. Kazuhiro Kokobo turned up dressed like this? Uh, he got in big trouble. He got in so much trouble. He got in so much trouble. I, I cannot understate how much trouble this guy got in for swagging it out that day. And it got to the point where so many people complained about how he was dressed to the Japanese government, they forced him to issue a formal apology the next day. <laughs> and that's the thing, he had to issue a formal apology for looking cool. I can like completely picture it because these apologies are always exactly the same. Mm -hmm. And it's hilarious because like that's considered more like professional, what you're supposed to do. And if you don't do that, it's considered insincere when like, obviously like probably to Western cultures, it seems the opposite. Yeah. Because it's so cookie cutter, it seems so <laughs> insincere. And here's the thing, um, uh, Kazuhiro Koko, he did not like that. He did not like that he was being forced to do this. And during his apology, he dragged out um, every single word for several seconds, metaphorically wiping his balls on every syllable. 
and after he'd finished apologizing, under his breath muttered the words, shut up, loud enough for every microphone there to pick up. And I can see your face now, you're very <laughs> shocked that he did this. Would you like to just let the people at home know why that's a big no-no? Oh my god, so <laughs> I guess I'll teach you a Japanese word, like, yabai. It means like dangerous, very literally. And like, as you're explaining all this, I'm just thinking like, yabai, yabai, yabai. <laughs> don't do this, don't do like, this. Do not, like, oh. It's also worth pointing out as well, he referred to the Olympic Games as nothing special. Yeah. <laughs> when he was asked for his like opinion on, do you not think like, you know, you're representing Japan on the world stage at the Olympics? Do you not think this is important and you should like treat it with more um, respect and decorum? Like the Olympics are nothing special. Oh my god. I actually want to like look back and check specifically like which words he used in Japanese. Because that's, I guess, a thing is that Japanese language doesn't have s swear words like we do in English. Like mm -hmm. there's no like fuck or something like that. Is there not? No, I mean like some people say like fuck. <laughs> but like often the way like you swear, quote unquote, is speaking rudely. So oftentimes when characters are swearing or like people in Japanese are swearing, it gets translated a little bit softer, but due to the context and like the cultural sort of um, uh, precedent, uh, it's like a swear word essentially. Mm -hmm. So I'm really wondering what he said to see like, <gasps> like what level of shocked I should be. <laughs> yeah. And we're all learning something today, but that um, uh, comment about it's nothing special reminds me a bit of, uh, I've looked up his name now, Bong Joon-ho director of Parasite, um, <laughs> when he won an Oscar. And it's like, it's really nice to win this local award. Yeah, so I, I gotta know, like, what, how much trouble did this guy get into? Uh, well, uh, members of his team, like his management, um, were not allowed um, to attend the opening ceremony. <gasps> and all viewings of his heats in Japan were cancelled. All for looking too fucking swag. He turned up looking so swag that people took issues. Like, we can't handle this. Like, we can't let him go out there looking like this. He looks too cool. And Japanese officials weren't done stomping um, Kazuhiro Coca Balls just yet because they also made his dad go on national TV and issue an apology for raising such a disrespectful son. <laughs> That's the thing as well. I imagine fucking up so bad your dad has to go on TV and apologize. Oh my God. That's <laughs> rough. I, I think it happened to me. I do if, like, way, way, way in the future. But I fuck up real bad on YouTube. You know, I'm a YouTuber, so chances are, statistically, I'm going to do something like that. And my dad had to go on the news. Imagine my dad. <laughs> Try to give go a, on, Stu! Try to give a press conference. <laughs> like, Mr. Smallwood, what do you think of this? Well, well, um, uh, well, I've not talked to Carl in a while, but um, I'm, I'm really sorry for what he did. Your dad's voice is not that deep. It is when I talk to him, because he's my dad. <laughs> What's crazy to me is, like, Obviously, that's a quote unquote like normal thing to happen to have a parent apologize for something like that. But the only other time I know of this happening is a friend of mine had her apartment broken into and this guy stole all of her money. What makes this like, I guess, even more bizarre was so my friend was French. He stole all her money in Europe. He took all of like he went to the ATM, took all of her money. And like he even wore like a blonde wig and everything to pretend to be her. <laughs> and then when um, the guy got caught and everything came out, one uh, one day she had a knock at the door. She thought it was like the police asking for more things. She opens the door. It's the guy's parents, and they come and they have this hand like calligraphied um, apology note. And then they give it to her, and then they start prostrating on the floor, like you know, full on. Like, on all fours, bowing, apologizing, sobbing, we raised such a failure. It's funny that you mention that because um, uh, Kazuhiro Kokobo had to go issue uh, another apology to make up for his worst apology. He had to issue an apology for his apology where he did that. <laughs> um, he bowed deeply in shame and regret. And again, I can only think of, you watch me play Yakuza 7, when you go apologize <laughs> to the shareholders, and you have to do like the super <laughs> apology, where you do like, you go all the way down. And for anyone out there who's wondering, well, how did this guy actually do at the Olympics? He did not place. And it's almost like he had something else on his mind. <laughs> That's the thing, isn't it? Like, he probably couldn't shred as hard as he needed to when this shit was in the back of his mind the entire time. Like, when the entirety of your home country, who you are representing on the world stage, is like, fuck you. And all you did was wear some sunglasses and some baggy pants. Amazing. 
So nearby Lulu, for all of the armchair experts out there who are going to be like, well, actually, in the comments, correcting everything you just said about Japan, Japanese culture, and the like, uh, would you just like to just clarify for them um, your background so um, and why we and why I brought you in and like refer to you um, uh, for pronunciation and stuff like that? So I'm Japanese. There we go. <laughs> That's the thing, because someone's going to be like, you got this fact about Japanese culture. I know I watched an anime once, so I wanted you to do that just for me, because I'll feel really bad if you go read the comments and see that. I'm like, but I'm Japanese. Honestly, like, it, not just for you, for me too. I was like, I need to like really like sneakily insert into this video that yes, I am in fact Japanese. Lulu is a nickname. It's not like my legal name. I have a Japanese name and all that good stuff. And... I even lived there for pretty much the entirety of my adult life, so yeah. Yeah, it's just one of those things that I want you to clarify, because like, someone in the comments, well, I've watched an anime or two, and I'm quite the expert on Japanese culture. You got this fact wrong. Yeah, well, I came out of my mom's vagina, so I think I know a little bit better. <laughs> Don't get more Japanese than that. <laughs> <laughs> Because that's the thing, because someone out there is going to be, like, correcting you on this. Like, you've got this one. That's how you literally live there. Pretty much. Like, we, when we met, I was still living there. Yeah, and have you got any stories about people correcting you about something like that? Because you must have had encounters with those anime fans who are like, I'm an expert on the place that you live because I watched it in a TV show once. I have a lot of those, but actually I would kind of like to flip it on its head okay. for you guys and have an opposite of like someone doing this to something British. My sister went through a phase where she really liked things on Tumblr or sharing things on Tumblr. And so she kind of half knew a lot of things from the UK. One of those things being hot fuzz. Okay. And so she was talking about that part where they're doing a car chase and the swan goes in front of them. And they're like, swan! And they have to like swerve and then they have to get it. And she's like, laugh. She's telling me about this scene and she's laughing a little bit. And I'm like, yeah. And she's like, and you know the best part? I'm like, what? She's like, the reason they had to swerve is because swans in the UK are the queen's property. <laughs> and so they have to protect the swan. And that's why they're swerving to get out of the way. And I'm like, no, they're not. And she's like, what do you mean? I'm like, in the movie. Did you watch the movie? They she's have like, the swan at the start. <laughs> they have the swan at the start. It's the swan they're looking for. That's what it is. And she's like, well, 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 no, but like the swans are really important in the UK. Don't you know this? <laughs> they are, but the fact that someone's going to be correcting the comments, it's only mute swans. Mute swans? Mute swans. It's a type of swan. Oh. It's like that and sturgeons. The queen has first dibs. If you ever catch a sturgeon in British waters, you have to give the queen first dibs. And uh, yeah, I do appreciate that you use this opportunity to roast your sister, who I hope watches these videos. Hi. And the other thing that I remember you telling me that just, it gave me just so much more perspective on this of when you described anime in Japan as being Marvel movies over here, of mm -hmm. everyone's aware of it, but the people who are really into it are like people who are super into like comic books and stuff. Like you, you tend to avoid them and no one really likes talking to those people. It's like that, that changed. My story. Like, that makes so much sense. Like when I went over there, it's like there's Goku shit everywhere. It's like, well, yeah, it's like there's Marvel shit over here as well. But like not everyone's obsessed with it. It's like they're aware yeah. of it via pop culture, but it's not a part of their lives to the extent it evidently is for a lot of people watching this, typing furiously in the comments. No doubt one-handed. 